BGW Systems Model 750 uh, power amplifier. Uh, from what I understand, there's not a problem with the amplifier itself. But what there is a problem is, there's a problem with the cooling fan on this. These units used a thermal uh, detection system that when the amplifier got to a certain temperature, it would turn on the fan. But uh, from what I understand, the biggest problem with these things is, that system fails and then the fan ends up running constantly. It's an AC powered fan, it makes a lot of noise. So what would tend to happen is people would disconnect them so that they didn't have to hear the fan running and that's what's happened on this is the owner of it has cut the wires to the fan and now there is no cooling. So what we're going to do on this video is I'm going to put a lower voltage on a 12 volt computer fan and a separate power supply to operate that fan. We'll put it inside the cabinet on this thing and, that, and then leave it running all the time. That way a, a smaller 12-volt a fan shouldn't make that much noise and it should be able, able to run the fan constantly. And then he doesn't have to worry about the amplifier overheating. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just put, I've got a five inch, it's a DC brushless fan. I'm gonna turn this thing on here. You'll hear all nice and quiet. This one here is So there's barely any sound at all, but it does move a fair bit of air, which will keep this unit cool. Now I'm running this fan on five volts, so I'm not running it at full power because again, it doesn't need, it's not gonna need to run at full power. As long as we keep air moving through the cabinet, we're not gonna have a problem with heat and this thing is putting out a fair bit of air. So that will cool the unit. So I'm gonna pull the top off this thing We'll swap the fan and I'll hook up the power supply to a source of switched power so that when you turn on the power, it'll apply power to the the uh, inverter. It's just a little inverter power supply that's going to power this up. But let's get the top off this thing and take a look at this brute. Look at the top of this unit, you'll see that there are 12 output transistors per channel. It's a dual mono design. I've already removed the, the screws from the heat sinks here so we can lift the boards out and swing them out of the way. But as you can see, it's a dual mono design. So here's our amplifier here. Here's all our driver transistors and our emitter follower resistors here for the outputs. Here's the fan I need to get at back here. And I just held in place by a couple screws. So let's get to unbolting that thing. It should be just a matter of unscrewing one and screwing the other one in. Here's a view from the back. You can see it's got nice big binding post for the speakers. This amplifier can be run in either mono or stereo. When it's running in mono, it's got double the power and you use just the two, the two positive terminals. One becomes a negative terminal, the other becomes a positive when it's in bridge mode. It's got both balanced and it's got quarter inch plugs. So customers got quarter inch adapters to take it down to RCA plugs. Because that's what he uses it with. So to take out the fan, I just have to remove these screws and there'll be probably nuts on the back side, which there are. So I just need to remove the four screws. And then I can remove the fan and install the new fan. By comparison, you can see how loud the other fan was and it really doesn't provide that much more airflow than the new one I'm putting in. So this is why people disconnected those fans because they were uh, exceptionally loud. And you know, it, it's fine when this was used in a, uh, in like a nightclub uh, you know, or a professional application where you've got the music just pounding. Um, but you can imagine that noise in your quiet living room where you're using this in a consumer uh, setting is completely unacceptable. So the way the fan is configured, it's actually a pressurizing unit, so the fan is blowing in. So we're going to orient the fan, the new one, so that the air is going into the cabinet. I do need to remove the retaining clips from the existing fan so that I can mount them on the new one. And they're not going to fit because this one here has metal posts that they fit over. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to glue them in place I'll use some hot glue just to glue these over the uh, mounting holes so that uh, we can attach the fan inside the cabinet so I'm just going to uh, get, uh, get my glue gun heating up here and we'll 
get some hot glue and glue those little tabs in place. So we get the hot snot out and just uh, put a bit of hot snot on each of the uh, corners and just place our mount in place. Okay, the fan's ready to go in. We just simply drop the fan in place and get our screws threaded back in. Oops, missed it off a bit here. Okay, the fan's mounted snugly. Now I just have to go about uh, finding a source of switched 120 volts so that I can wire up the adapter to that switch source. So for that, I'll get out the meter and measure where the switch goes. On the back here, there was just a couple of marrets. This is where the AC power cord connects to the unit. Our brown line here is going to be one side of the switch. The other side is another brown line that goes over here. I think that's where it goes. Yeah, someone's already been doing wiring. Comes up to on the back here. I'm just going to pull the camera off so you can see where I'm going to connect this to. So it's going to be this top connector here. And I know that because if I put my meter on there in, in uh, continuity mode, I've got nothing. But if I turn on the power switch, now I've got continuity. Right, so that's between this brown wire and this terminal here. That's the switch. So this is going to be the switch side and the uh, blue wire over here is going to be the neutral. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this completed adapter inside the cabinet. There's lots of room for mounting this thing and zap it out of the way. And I'm just going to put the hook up the wires, solder them to the terminals and put some good size heat shrink over top and shrink it down. And that will isolate the, uh, the pins. So there's no chance of short circuit and then I can just attach that somewhere on the inside of the cabinet, hook it to the power switch so that when the power is turned on, the fan comes on. Okay, I've got my wires connected so we'll just get the heat gun in here now and shrink down the tubing. Okay, we've got the new adapter here. I've got it tied down to the switched line, which is just this brown wire here that's coming off of the, uh, the thermal shutdown switches, and the other side tied to the neutral. So I'm just going to uh, get the adapter in place, and then we'll remount the uh, heat sinks, and I'll plug it in and make sure that the, the fan comes on when I turn on the power. Okay, got everything ready to go. Got to power it up. Let's turn on the power. And there goes the fan. The fan is nice and quiet, and oh yes, we have lots of airflow coming up through here. When the top is on, that forces the air across the heat sinks. As you can see, the way that this top is, is configured, right, the air comes up the middle, the air gets forced across the heat sinks and out the side vents. So that fan now running full time is going to provide plenty of cooling for this amplifier. That's how you modify one of these big amps. Put in a nice quiet 12 volt fan. I'm running it on five volts because I don't need the airflow. I don't need it going full speed. Uh, not in this application anyway. It just keeps it nice and quiet and we don't have to worry about this thing overheating now with uh, air flowing over the, the components all the time. I can put my uh, screws back in, put the cover on it and this one is taken care of. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one.